how does the teller validation process work and how do you align because th there are a lot of different parties involved in teller and like how do you align the incentives of all these parties to act truthfully yeah well this is you know this is like crypto crypto economics like 101 like how do you incentivize people to act truthfully and honestly and to be honest like you you basically just assume that everybody is this like neutral actor that cares about money um, <laughs> this is you know how you sort of map out all maybe maybe it's just life in general right um, but th this is sort of how you map it all out you assume that people just care about money and they don't want to lose money so if if you the, the way that teller works just to give a sort of a high level overview uh, we have what are called reporters. They come and they stake TRB tokens. They will stake, right now it's about $2,000 worth of Teller tokens in a smart contract, and then they're allowed to be reporters. So then if you wanted, say, the Bitcoin price on chain, you would come and you'll say, hey, reporters, I'll pay whoever puts the price of Bitcoin on chain $5. Just, this is just an example. Um, now all of those reporters are going to race to basically submit set Bitcoin price on chain in order to grab your $5. Um, if that price is now, what happens is everybody can see what price, whoever, whatever reporter. So let's say it was me. I, I placed the price on chain. Everybody can see it. Um, everybody looks at it. And if it's a good price, it just stays on chain. You can use it and read it. If it's a bad price, you or probably one of the other reporters who's monitoring it more closely will dispute it. So they'll pay a small fee and say, hey, this is a wrong price. That price will get pulled off chain. The next reporter, you, your $5 still hasn't come to me yet. So <laughs> the next reporter will place the a va hopefully valid price of Bitcoin on chain. And you'll just use that one next. Uh, as far as what happened to me and my bad value, uh, that went over to our governance contract. So that's what happens during a dispute and we'll have a vote basically so the teller system which comprises of users who get a vote so the people who paid that five dollar tip uh, the reporters themselves they get a portion of the vote and then the token holders uh, they vote on whether this was a good value or a bad value and whether or not i should lose my two thousand dollars and that's a simple way of how teller works uh, anybody can participate anybody can request data and um yeah, it's a nice little simple crypto economic system. But I think, as you said, like, how do you incentivize people to to do the right thing? You you would basically assume that the reporters don't want to lose money. And you assume that you as the user also want good data and don't want to lose money by disputing things that shouldn't be disputed. Well, and it's like they also have the risk. Not only do they have the risk of losing money, but they have the risk of it's like they can lose part of their stake correct the reporters can and then they also miss out on the financial incentives of pushing that accurate price on chain so it's kind of like you, you hit it from both sides uh you you hit their wealth and you hit their re revenue i guess at the same time potentially it, but i guess like where are these reporters getting that price feed from because there there can be a lot of ambiguity um in those prices like 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 we're saying with a bitcoin price like if they're pulling that data from Coinbase versus Binance, or maybe like a, a lower liquid exchange, there's going to be some, I guess, like differences in the prices that could be reported. So how do you determine which one is the accurate or the truthful price in that sense? Well, th this is a super tough question for oracles in general, um, because like th there is no way to know programmatically on chain what a correct price is just because if you knew what the correct price is, you wouldn't need an Oracle, obviously. Um, so there, there sort of has to be some sort of subjectivity in it. And it, you, it actually comes down to how the user defines the question. So whenever you asked for what is the price of Bitcoin, that's a very vague <laughs> question. <laughs> you know, like we could agree, like, you know, let's say the price right now is $20,000. If you put on twenty thousand dollars and fifty cents, that's probably just fine. Nobody's going to dispute you over that. Um, if you put down twenty one thousand dollars, maybe there's a little bit. Maybe it was fine on some exchanges, and there is sort of that 
a little bit of ambiguity. However, what, what we tell users is if you want more specific data, you have to request it. So, you know, like Ampleforth is one. They're, they're one of our users on, on Ethereum and um, they have a specific, they want a 24 hour TWAP from these specific exchanges and that's how they define the data. So, you know, you know, they, they can tell if, if you're off by half a percent, you can tell pretty easily on the data. Um, whereas, you know, most people, if, if you just wanted, what's the price of Ethereum, it, it may be more open to, um, I guess, subjectivity, but it's also a good thing. So th there, there comes a trade off in it because if you wanted the more sort of specific you get, actually, you increase, I guess, the ability of your data to be censored. So if you if you would say, like, what's the price of Bitcoin at? on Coinbase or according to the Coinbase API. The problem with that statement is now the Coinbase API could potentially shut off or they could potentially say, you know, if your report, the Coinbase API cannot be used in teller contracts or something like that. And um, there could be regulatory risks there. Um, and, and you've basically just centralized your entire <laughs> data feed process by relying on this one single entity. Whereas if you say what's a valid Bitcoin price, although it's more vague, if Coinbase shuts down, I have plenty of other ways to find a valid Bitcoin price. Um, so trade-offs for sure. Yeah. And I guess the one other thing is, so let's say like I, I'm a developer and I need the price of Bitcoin for my app and I want to use the Teller protocol. And so I, I pay these five dollars, you know, theoretical five dollars, however much it costs to get that feed. Is it just whoever submits the price first? Is it the reporter that submits first that gets the reward? Yes. Uh, so the, it's as simple as that. Um, a lot of the reporters now have MEV bots going where they're literally front running each other to submit it. Um, so it gets very, very competitive. Um, so the issue comes down in, so you, the way that Teller works is you can stake multiple times for an address. So if, if you have $2,000 staked, you can report once every 12 hours. If, if you have $4,000, now you can report twice every 12 hours. And so the more that you have staked, the more that you can report and do this competition.